Hello, and that is right. Today, I want to do a review of a true NAS system, a subject that I've not really talked about on the channel anywhere near enough. I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on that shortly, but this is the iX Systems Mini X Plus. This is a kind of turnkey solution of TrueNAS. For those that aren't aware, um, TrueNAS is open source. It is the ZFS based NAS um, download that you can install on any system you've got knocking around. You've got an old PC you're not using anymore, even an old laptop. As long as the hardware is near mid range, you can run TrueNAS on it and build your very own NAS. You don't have to pay QNAP, Synology, TerraMaster, Asus, or WD, any of those companies. You can go ahead and just build your own from scratch. But do bear in mind when you do that, you are using a very technical piece of software the learning curve can be steep and what you save in the old bunts you are paying in time and energy and occasionally frustration ask anyone that sat on the floor while trying to build a pc from scratch hoping beyond hope that when they press that power button the first time it's going to work you know that feeling now these guys have introduced a lovely middle ground there in the middle you can have the flexibility and customization and security and all of that of true nas but on a pre-made solution. It's not the cheapest, it lets be straight about this, but you are getting an enterprise-led solution. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about this system. I'm gonna talk a little bit about iX systems. I'm gonna talk about things that I like about this system, maybe things I'm less keen on, to be perfectly frank. And of course, we're gonna talk about TrueNAS. A number of you over the last year, year and a half have asked me, why am I never talking about TrueNAS? I only ever talk about these different brands in data storage. And although I talk about lots of data storage when it comes to NAS, I've actually got a lot more of a narrower field of brands that I talk about. And the simple, straightforward answer is, I don't think until now in 2022, maybe the end of 2021, that I've mastered the craft of what I do enough to talk about true NAS and this and do it some bloody justice. I think if I talked about it a year and a half, two years ago, I mean, three, four years ago was when I was dicking around with three NAS, I don't think I had the necessary nous to be able to talk about it like I do now. And I think now I'm ready to talk about true NAS and I'm going to talk about it a lot over the coming next month or so alongside other brands. Now, the first thing you may notice is you know, this is a review. Where's the box? Why am I not doing an unboxing? Well, I'll give you a straight answer on that one because the box is huge. This little five bay system, or technically five plus two bay system, arrived in one of the biggest like for like boxes I've ever seen. Inside was an absolute sea of packaging. It arrived with the hard drives inside, supplied by iX themselves, obviously. Um, and inside was five hard drives, WD Red hard drives as well, and a couple of SSDs. And we will talk a little bit about that pre-made architecture. But again, a huge degree of protection there for the system when it was sent over. I mentioned earlier on about pricing on this system. Now, there's good and bad news behind that. When you, because again, although this video is going to be about TrueNAS, I, this review primarily, I've done a whole dedicated review to just the latest version of, uh, not the beta release of 13, but on 12, um, are coming very, very soon. This video is about the hardware on this iX system and a little bit about TrueNAS overall. Um, this system, in its current architecture, retails for about $1,100, I think, in this. Now, for that, you're looking at the 8-core um, Intel CPU inside there. It's also got 32 gig of DDR4 ECC memory, uh, memory error code correction. It's also got two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports there on the rear, and it's got five dedicated SATA hard drive bays and two 2.5-inch SATA SSD base there and again this system arrives with the ability to pretty much configure it from the ground up from them so if you were already kind of in love with the customization and the flexibility of TrueNAS but you didn't want to have to build the thing from scratch think about power efficiency and getting the right components and an architecture and one of the reasons you liked NAS is they arrive in all these nice cases this is where that middle ground is, but you are going to have to pay a bit more for it, but there's a large amount of customization on their website there. Now, first, let's talk about design of the system. Let's actually break down into that immediately. So it is, you know, fairly robust looking. It is a metal chassis all the way around. I will be powering it on. 
before the end of this video metal base metal all the way around no ventilation on the sides there the front is completely ventilated there and on the rear we've got a further active cooling fan there we'll talk a little bit more about that later on but if we open the front door of this again it is lockable i've left the keys in the accessories we'll talk about those in a moment what we have is five SATA bays there let's turn that around so the light can have a good go at it We've got the five individual SATA bays there, each of which is ventilated. Remember, the door is lockable. Each of these trays is lockable. And if we remove one of these drives, you can see it is utilizing WD Red, and that's Red Plus drives inside there. These are the four TBs I've gone with that. Screwed in, not click and load trays, metal spring loaded trays. There's LEDs for each of the individual bays as well. And on the base, we've got these two SSD caching bays here. But again, it's worth highlighting, you don't have to just use them for caching. You can utilize those bays for raw storage if you choose. This system doesn't have M2 NVMe slots, which I was a little surprised by in 2022. I mean, this system didn't arrive. I think this system's maybe over a year old. It was maybe released at the end of 2020. So I'm very surprised even then that there wasn't M2 SSD bays inside there, even though you can get M2 SSD bays now in NASes for like four or $500. Um, but the drives that are inside, again, they're all signed off and approved by them if you go from their approval list. You don't have to use their drives. You can get the system completely unpopulated if you choose, which is very important. Um, we've got full ventilation there on the front. We've also got power button, more LEDs for system and network health all along the side there. But what's really intriguing is two USB ports there. Let's bring that closer to the front. We've got two USBs there on the front of the system. Now, they can be utilized um, for raw storage. They can be utilized for USB backups. And one of the things when I was going through TrueNAS in its uh, version 12 is the sheer range of support of storage on this. Yes, there is, at least in this pre-made solution, a lack of an M2 SSD slot, as well as things like U2 and SAS-based ports, ports, but there are options out there. And again, don't overlook the fact that TrueNAS is completely custom. It's open source, you can build whatever you want there. So though it's not available on this system, that doesn't preclude you from those kind of advantages and taking advantage of that storage in TrueNAS. Indeed, TrueNAS has a fusion pool system that allows you to uh, mediate different storage mediums and they'll be used to their inherent benefits, much uh, comparable to that of QNAP and Q-Tier that we talked about there in the past. Now, the chassis itself, if we go around to the rear and talk about the ports, again, it's not gonna blow your socks off, but at the same time, what you're getting is pretty much what you're going to want. If we have a look at the back, we've got that big old internal PSU there, there at the top thing, that's a 250 watt internal PSU. We've got the system fan there on the back. On the base, we've got an M2, uh, uh, we've got a PCIe upgrade slot there of three times four. So again, you can add some more up to, you know, a potential maximum 4,000 megabytes per second bandwidth across external interface ports there you put. We've got the two um, 10 GPE M2 slots. You've also got an out of bounds management port there as well, which might be useful. You have additional USB there. And you've got a VGA, something I was really confused by. And if anyone that watched the Q&A that I did with IX a little while ago, I was kind of surprised at the use of VGA on, their, on this system. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand it's not an embedded graphics processor, so putting HDMI or something on there would be tough, but it wouldn't be impossible. And when it comes to TrueNAS, I think unlike a lot of a system from, say, Synology and QNAP, that their graphical user interfaces, but a big old emphasis on the G in graphical. In the case of TrueNAS, there's a very even line between the GUI of TrueNAS via your web browser and command line control, SSH, that sort of thing. And this is a system that I think people are more likely to use a visual out or a VGA to interface with the system directly for troubleshooting and stuff like that, because these are gonna be the people that know what they're doing. Consequently, I'm kind of surprised that it's a VGA out on this system. Um, but overall, I mean, I quite like the hardware. The arrangement inside, and we will open up the case in just a moment, um, is, you know, fairly nice. I mean, again, we are talking about open source software. And when you are paying for this, you're not really paying for the software. Do remember that. Unlike when you are buying a Synology or a QNAP system, and let's, for example, bring ourselves a QNAP. If you were looking at a comparable QNAP like this one, 
This QLAP here, the TVS872X, it's a 10 GB each system, and again, they're not like for like, um, but with these two systems, when you buy the QNAP, you're buying the hardware and the software together, and that's included in the price there. And this system here knocks around for about 12 to 1400 pounds, depending on where you buy in the world and what configuration you go for. And this is a six core i5, I believe. Now, this system here, the software is open source, it's free. There are tailored extras that are built in, it has to be said, towards. Um, IX in the application center, for example, there's a pre-designated drop-down. There's a couple of graphical user interface options that you only get with the IX version of this system. But still, nonetheless, the software, for the most part, is software that you can get for free. So when you're paying that price tag there, do bear in mind with that price tag that what you're paying for is majority, like 80, 90% hardware, they do pre-install it and they do a lot of the work for you and it's ready to rock off the bat. But still, nonetheless, with the software living inside, I believe on a SATA-based flash DOM inside that it reads from, much like NAS is used software flash inside, that mod the majority of the money you're paying towards it, unlike Kin out there, is for a change, a lot more towards hardware and software. And then, you look at Synology. And with Synology, yes, again, you are buying a hardware and software solution there. This is uh, the 6Bay here. Um, and with this one, this system here, you are still paying more for the software than the hardware. And this system here at the top, the 1621, knocks around for about seven, 800 quid. There is a 10 GBE version, uh, the 1621XS Plus, and that knocks around for about 15 or 1600 nigger. And again, none of that is including media. And this is a system, that, again, hardware software solution. So the hardware inside this, that eight core processor, 32 gig of ECC, and the drive media included, because remember, that makes all the difference. The drive media you're utilizing, remember, in terms of flexible pricing, you do still seem to be paying a little bit more than you think you should for that hardware. But again, you are getting a pre-made solution overall. Um, another thing worth bearing in mind about this system, when it's operational, when the seagulls aren't being super annoying above me, is how much noise it makes when it's in operation. So if we power this bad boy on, Remember, this is a completely metal solution, metal all the way around, um, optical hard drives inside there. So if we power this on, get it turned on, get that power button, there we go. And you can have some idea about the noise level. As you can hear, when it's operation, you can hear that fan. Now, at the moment, that fan is on maximum during spin-up. But once the system is fully booted, that fan will power down while it's going for its operational like kind of spin-up. So let's fast forward to when the system has finished its initial booting. So that's the noise of the system when it's fully booted up. And again, in close proximity, you're going to hear it. But to be honest, these two systems I've got on my left are certainly noisier than this. You can definitely pick it up there on the mic, a distance of about a, a foot and a half perhaps there, but still nonetheless, that's not too bad noise-wise for its operation. I'm just gonna unsafely power this down. I don't advise you do this at home. So I'm just gonna power that down there. Again, don't do it like that at home, kids. Uh, we're gonna remove that power because the next thing I wanna do is talk about some of the hardware inside here. So if we bring those more there on the table. And what we're gonna do is remove this from its external casing and give you a little look at how this looks inside um, again when it comes to getting one of these ix system NASs, another thing i would be keen to highlight about them is unlike uh, when you utilize um, true nas normally when you use true nas as open source and downloading it free you're kind of heavily dependent on the free community support the kind of forums of people helping you out now, a lot of people buy paid solutions, again, from companies like Synology and QNAP because they want a brand to have to help them out if they hit any difficulties. And this is where, again, solutions like this iX system that arrive with that kind of branded side support, they may be beneficial to you. So if, again, if you were always interested in TrueNAS but you wanted a bit of help, this might be a very interesting and useful way to go. 
to still get the flexibility of TrueNAS and that ZFS support, while at the same time getting a bit of branded behind you. So if we open one panel, we can see inside the cable quite tidy there inside the arrangement. There's that big PSU there on the side. Again, we've got our two sticks of RDIM. I will highlight this four bag has got four slots of um, like the memory inside there, that RDIM um, two sticks of 16 gig DDR4 ECC inside there. If I remove the other side panel, we can have a little look inside there. <coughs> this gives us a little bit more of a look at the side there. And as you can see, nice cable tidying arrangements inside. Again, exactly what I'd like to see overall. Indeed, the software is running from an SSD, as you can see inside there. And what's really intriguing to me, and this is quite new, I've just noticed inside we do have an NVMe SSD. You can see there that WD drive there at the bottom, and that is where our OS resides originally. Now, whether that is the system accessing that SSD at all times for that information is something I'm going to have to check. But the fact that it has that M2 SSD bay, and it is an NVMe WD Blue, I should add, so that's a WD Blue SN550, Having the SSD um, supply the OS for this system from there, you know, quite beneficial. But I think I would rather be utilising that bay for raw storage overall. And I'm surprised they didn't find another way to implement the OS there inside overall. But in terms of layout of the system, it's still quite a nice design. It's still, it's very compact. It's arguably just as compact and smaller as Synology and QNAP alternatives in the market. But again... It's about that software, that open source software. So what I'm going to do is get this bad boy loaded up, open up on the system, and then we're going to have a little look about TrueNAS. But more importantly, because we've already got a full review of TrueNAS 12 coming, we're going to see what the IX extra elements are to the software on this system. So let's get this plugged in and inside that test machine. Okay, so here we are on the desktop utilizing the graphical user interface of our iX system X+. Plus. Now, bear in mind that the difference between utilizing this system uh, from iX versus building your own one, the details are actually quite small. And I've got a full review of TrueNAS well underway. It may already be published, in fact, but... For this system, it's worth bearing in mind the small differences between the iX and a standard do-it-yourself true NAS there. First and foremost, you've got the link there directly to the guides there at the top right of the screen. And again, that goes directly to iX systems. And then there at the bottom, you can open up a tab there to open up into the guides to help you along with the setup. There's not a lot of video stuff there, but I do know they do post a lot of videos online on setup guides. Uh, on top of that, if you go into the system area, you can view the enclosure because obviously you are now using a system system where the enclosure uh, is uniform and therefore they can find out more information about it and indeed if you go into the storage area you're able to find out more information about those individual disks but again a lot of that information is um, native to TrueNAS to start with. Um, one area that is worth highlighting that is unique I believe to the iX system is when you want to go down to the support section and from here you can find out a lot more information about getting a little bit more hands-on reporting and support from TrueNAS themselves as you are kind of a premium user there and again you've got the information there you will have to create a JIRA account and attach a, a, a debug report but again, that's an extra little layer of uh, information there that's quite useful for tracking issues. But again, I think most of it is directly for iX. Again, maybe someone out there can tell me if this is something that's been recently added to even the free tier of um, TrueNAS systems there. Now, again, we could go a little bit through TrueNAS, and I've got the full review coming. I'm sure a number of you have used it before. Um, everything from the user interface giving you a huge amount of information with regards to resources when the system is in utilization. Some you know things that are just not available on other platforms, for example, the ability to monitor historical information on, say, for example, every single drive on screen. Yes, you've got that with um, Active Insight from Synology, and you've got that with um, the um, um, U-Link service from QNAP, but those are premium subscription services, and this is included with your system, the ability to go back in time and go through some of your old reports then. Again, that can extend to the majority of the system. On top of that, um, everything from installing those plugins, because there are now more plugins. It isn't just the plugins you get 
with the IX system listing there because they've added these ones directly. But of course you can switch to the community supported applications of which there are plenty there in the background. Forgive the slow loading of icons there. I'm using the internet to do some uploading there in the background. Same goes for virtual machines. Um, there isn't really anything extra from the um, IX side of things. They haven't included like some ISOs like QNAP do on some of their virtual machine downloading issues there, but it's it's fine. It's absolutely fine there. The ability to create jails, you know, uh, that's all native to true NAS. Everything about it, like you are getting a true NAS experience here, but it just comes back to what I was saying earlier on about when you are utilizing this and you are purchasing an IX NAS, you are predominantly paying for that hardware more so than anything. To put that into a little bit of perspective there, um, here's the official True NAS Mini page. As you can see there, lots of information about the WD drives that are installed and stuff like that. And let's say, for example, the True NAS system here, you can go to the configurator, and there you can see we've selected the X system there, although there is a more affordable E system. And again, you can find out more information about their individual specifications throughout the range directly from them. But say, for example, you go for a configuration where you go for my configuration, which is an eight core, 32 gig of memory setup there. And then from there, we populate the bays. Um, we'll go for populating four bays. Let's go for that. But four bays, and we're gonna populate those with four TB drives, not 18, that would be foolish. So four TB drives. And then from there, we would populate the SSD bays from you know you're starting to see already that that price is starting to mount up it is good hardware and if you try to buy a solution like this including the enclosure at 10 gigabit ethernet it wouldn't be too shabby but it would still maybe cost a little less than that and i think for me as much as i like true nas and i do genuinely like what the ix system solution is here it's providing true nas and turnkey solutions as a complete item still nonetheless for me i kind of wish the price was a little lower because true nas on its own is pretty unparalleled everything from uh, the enormous storage advantages that it brings everything from faster raid builds to faster rebuilds using that percentage um of uh, data used building algorithm um when we talk about the caching there's so much better caching systems built into true nas than most of the other platforms even raid resilvering and simple stuff like that but Nonetheless, we are here to review the hardware today, not the software. Let's make our way back over there and talk a little bit more about this hardware. So overall, what do we think? I think iX system, what they've done here, is an interesting middle ground. I think for those of you that have been utilising, you know, more affordable NAS platforms or been utilising NASs and really over the last few years have learnt the ropes of network and data storage and are now thinking, I'm going to get my hands dirty on something a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more powerful, a little bit more customizable. Now I know what I'm doing. TrueNAS is always and has always been a very viable option. But this review was never just about TrueNAS. It was about these guys and what they're presenting. Are they presenting a turnkey alternative to trying to learn TrueNAS from the ground up and build your own machine? Or are they basically flogging you free software? And I think it's pretty much the former. I like what I've seen so far. I think the fact that it was able to run straight away at the click of a finger was advantageous. When you look at the package that they sent through, they're taking it seriously, even the accessories. I didn't really talk about that from the detailed manuals and setup guides, something that you don't get from other NAS brands. Um, a lot of the storage media and the way it was packaged was expertly presented. Even things like the LAN cables. We got Cat6 cables here at three meters a pop. Unusual power cable screws, more information, setup instructions. There's just a lot more information here ready and available to you, you know, than most NAS systems out there. So fair play to them. They haven't just tried to just flog you some old bit of hardware kick and slam on some free open source software on there. I'm sure there's lots of places on eBay and the like where you can find people flogging um, ZFS ready servers there with a six month warranty slapped on top of it. At least with these guys, I am genuinely getting the impression that one, this is an enterprise product and two, that they will help me out and have my back when I'm in Stuck. I think the pricing is a little bit higher than I'd like. I know the target market they're aiming for there. I think the pricing is maybe 10 to 15% too expensive for what it is. And if we were living in a world where you couldn't get ZFS equipped QNAPs 
or that the Synology platform doesn't already factor in things like file cell peeling, like uh, rate, quick build times there, deduplication being more readily available on most platforms. I think if they weren't around, that price tag would be a little bit more justified. But I still think it's a little price than it needs to be. But I can't fault the architecture. I cannot fault the hardware design at all. I can't fault the deployment of the system. Quick, easy, and straightforward. And if you are someone that is thinking of making the move into TrueNAS, I would recommend experimenting with it first, maybe via a VM. There's lots of online portals that you can do to sort of test out the UI of TrueNAS before you take the plunge. But if you like TrueNAS and that customizability, and you want to have free reign over your network and data, but at the same time have that lovely corporate sort of branded feeling to back you up, it's one of the best options out there, I've got to say. And in terms of what it delivers in its package, although a little bit more expensive than we might like, is still a fantastic product overall. Now, I'm going to be doing the full review of TrueNAS if it's not already live. I'm also going to be comparing the user interfaces of TrueNAS utilizing this IX system versus Synology DSM and QNAP QTS and QUTS Hero. We'll also be talking about whether, if you are in the market for a paid solution, whether you should pay for one of these bad boys or if it's worth you going for Synology and QNAP for um, a Linux-based, more user-friendly solution because that, again, is going to be an important bit there user friendly your skill set will be the decider otherwise thank you so much for watching the full written hardware review should be linked in the description so do check that out but otherwise click like if you've enjoyed the video it helps you know what i'm doing right and what i'm doing wrong and click subscribe to learn more and of course if you are looking for the right solution be it true now be it turnkey be it whatever in terms of data storage use the free advice section linked in the description over to nas compares it's made by me and eddie we answer every question that we can it might take us a day or so to answer inquiry because we are busy guys making videos and articles all the time but in my in a day or so we will answer it and it's completely unbiased we do nothing to your email couldn't give us stuff about it there's donate buttons use them ignore them it's up to you but otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time